Hello and welcome to Behind the Bearcat. This is the podcast where the Northwest Missouri State University Career Services Office chats with Northwest faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends to hear about their career journeys, how they got to where they are, and how they became Bearcats. I'm Northwest Career Services Assistant Director Travis Klein. And I'm Hannah Christian, the Director of Career Services here at Northwest. And today's guest on our show is... I need a drum for drum roll, but... <laughs> I'm Ryan Melke. I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Marketing uh, and Promotions over in Athletics. Welcome. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, guys. So our first yeah. athletics guest. So <laughs> I feel honored. Yes. A lot of pressure, I Lots guess. to talk about. Gold with star Northwest on your athletic. door. <laughs> yes. So I imagine that title gets you pretty busy. So what in all do you do? You said you, you're the Assistant Director of Marketing in Athletics. So yep. So I'll be Assistant Athletic Director for Marketing. So uh, I oversee all the sports marketing uh, for all of our D2 athletic teams. Um, so I think there's 15, 16 of them. Um, if you count all the tracks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like all the marketing, social media, graphic design, uh, poster design, schedule cards, um, and then working with our sponsors to come up with fun and engaging uh, sponsorship activities. So like t-shirt giveaways, uh, bandanas, uh, a bunch of random stuff. And I also oversee our Bearcat Athletics app, um, which fans can sign up for, get notifications, reward points, stuff like that. So tell us the story, the long and winding journey of how you got to this place. Yeah, so uh, I started out at uh, University of Northern Iowa uh, for my undergrad. I think it was my freshman year, end of my freshman year. My dad sent me this sign-up thing for an internship with the Northern Iowa Athletic Marketing Department. It's like, okay, this would be kind of cool, uh, work in sports, watch some sports, whatever. Um, so I did it. I started in my sophomore year, did that for two years as an intern. Um, and then my boss asked if I wanted to be the student assistant um, and then graduate assistant. So I'd get paid, which is nice. Uh, instead of doing an unpaid internship for so uh, so were you a marketing like you were always interested in marketing were you a marketing student like when yes. you came to college like marketing you knew that's what you wanted to do yeah so I started at high school they had like this business professionals of America organization um, so I joined that I think my junior year of high school um, so I kind of got interested in marketing and how that all works out like how you convince people to like buy your product stuff like that so I kind of found that interesting um so I kind of started then, and then um, somehow I won some award my senior year of high school uh, for BPA. I have no idea how we won, uh, but my, our group won, um, and we got to go to like nationals, um, so that was kind of fun. Um, but when I was at UNI, I interned for two years as an unpaid intern, uh, worked my way up to be a student assistant, graduate assistant, um, and then I got my master's degree in leisure youth and human services, not really related at all to sports, but it was one I didn't have to take like the GRE or anything to get into the program. Um, so there I was kind of overseeing. Did you also, sorry for interrupting, did you also do your grad program there at UNI? Yes, I did. Yep. Okay. So it was very nice. Um, and I still had friends that were like finishing their degrees. So I didn't have to like find my place to live by myself. So it was very easy to just keep living with the same people I've been living with for my whole time. Um, and I got to work with a lot of interesting sports at UNI. Um, I was with volleyball, women's basketball, uh, wrestling, uh, softball. So those were like my four main sports that I got to work with. And then all the home football games we got to work. Um, so I was like kind of doing like music, uh, running the promotions on the field court, um, stuff like that. And then during my last year of grad school, uh, I started working at UPS as well on top of doing my grad assistant position. Um, try to make some extra money and then finishing up my grad school program at UNI. I uh, started applying for a bunch of jobs. Um, I think I had five or six on campus interviews. So, like, they fly me out. So, I got to go to like Wyoming, uh, Duke, uh, K State was another one. And the final one was uh, Lehigh University out in Pennsylvania. Um, so, I actually took that job at Lehigh uh, as a marketing manager. Um, and so, and so again, I'm going to interrupt again. Um, so you you were looking for a very specific position though, right? Like you yeah. wanted to do marketing for sports at a collegiate level. I'm mean, yeah. like, you knew that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, I enjoyed like the college level. Um, a lot of people always ask like, why not pro or stuff like that? And I was like, ah, it just doesn't intrigue me as much. I think the college is a little bit better, um, especially since their athletes aren't paid to play. So I feel like there's a little bit more, I don't know, they're more dedicated um, to like the school spirit and stuff like that. Whereas less like ego pro, that way. Yeah. Less ego. There's still some coaches that have pretty big egos. I but bet that's true. That's yeah. Okay. 
I can handle that. <laughs> All right. So you made it to Lehigh. I, I wanted to clarify that because I think sometimes, so you say like, I had all these interviews and they went and flew me out. Right. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just make it very clear. Like if there's a student who's listening or someone who's like going to be a young professional, you aren't just shotgunning your resume to every single job opening that looked like it was, you know, something you might be interested in. You knew exactly the position you were looking for and you kind of, you know, you were very strategic about where you were, you know, applying. Yeah. I for sure knew that it had to be like an entry level um, marketing job. Um, so definitely looking at the job descriptions and seeing, make sure it's entry level. Um, Cause a lot of them, some of the like higher up ones, like assistant athletic director job, you need a couple more years of experience um, for that. Um, so it's just looking for like the very specific marketing kind of fit what I was already doing as a GA just added a little bit more responsibilities. Awesome. Yeah. I just, I wanted to clarify that it wasn't that you were just like shotgunning that right. resume out there. You, you knew what you wanted to yeah. do. So, yeah. all right. So back, we went to Lehigh. Yep. So I was only there for a year um, before this job opened up, but at Lehigh, I was kind of in charge. They had like 28, 29 sports. Um, they're division one, uh, kind of lower level division one. Um, but it was kind of a good experience for me. Um, I learned a lot about myself um, and kind of how, I don't know everything because I kind of came in and was like, okay, I can do this. This is easy. This is what we need to change. And then I was like, quickly learned that not everyone is very open to change. Um, so that was a very good experience uh, for me. Um, and I got to make a lot of good connections just in the short time I was there. Um, but it was so a good what time. Were you specifically, like give me a day in your life in that one year of like your first working year. So I was technically the title was the marketing manager for athletics. Um, so I'd work closely with like our ticket office on coming up with creative ticket promos, um, creating marketing plans that encompass like single game ticket sales, um, like some ideas on how like we would get more fans like a set, for just one game or something like that. Um, I would also do a lot of graphic design there as well. Um, and then like on game days for say a football game, um, I would be upstairs in the press box kind of directing everything that was going on. Um, with like the video board, uh, music, the band, everything going on on the field was kind of going through me. And I would tell like the PA announcer, like, hey, at this time out, we got to do this uh, sponsor uh, PA read and then put this up on the video board, stuff like that. I think people don't realize that that's such big business, you know, even at the collegiate level and especially at the professional level, like, you know, when you go to a game, like the game is part of it, but there's all this other stuff that goes on behind the scenes of sponsors and contests and stuff to keep the audience engaged and active. I mean, that's a whole industry, I think, that's kind of invisible to a lot of people that aren't in it, really. Yeah. It's a lot of fun working with like a lot of our sponsors, too. Um, they're very open to any idea they got just to get their name out there, mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to students. Um, I think like for this past basketball season, we worked with U.S. Bank. And we gave away five hundred dollars to a student organization, and I—that was the easiest promotion I've ever had to do because student orgs were all clamoring to be there, and it was just rock paper scissors. Like there's nothing, nothing too fancy. And U.S. Bank was like, "Yep, let's do it. Easy." So I'm like, "Okay." Win, 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 right there. Absolutely. Big win. All so, right. So, so you're at Lehigh for a year, and then came to Northwest. So had you heard of Northwest before? You and I is close, but not that close. So had you so heard of us before? Uh, yeah. A little bit. So my brother had some uh, friends from high school that played, I think they played here in 2007 to 2010, uh, played football here. So they're on the national championship in 2009. Um, so I kind of heard about it through that. Um, Colin McDonough, our sports information director, um, he was at Northern Iowa when I was there as a sports information director. So I got to know him very well, working right next to his office. Um, so he's the one who actually texted me, uh, I think it was like February of 2019, I think. Um, and said, hey, marketing girl is leaving. Would you be interested in this job? I don't think I hesitated at all. I think I just said, sure, I'm in. Uh, my girlfriend at the, or my wife, girlfriend at the time, uh, she was living in Lincoln. Um, so it kind of made sense to move back because she was flying back and forth. We we're flying back and forth across the country uh, just to see each other once a month if we could. Um, and then I kind of did a little bit more digging on Northwest and that was during the 38-0 and basketball season. Um, so I kind of got really intrigued by that, seeing basketball have a lot of success and then learn more about the football program and then all the other programs that have had success too. So it was kind of an eye-catching job for sure. Um, it's a perfect opportunity. I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So it's like four hours from home. Um, so my parents can drive down. I can drive, see them. So it works out very well. 
and I'm not, I have no marketing training. Let me be very clear, but it seems, uh, if your sports teams are doing well, that it would be easier to market them. I mean, that just seems like common sense, right? But, um, and, and more fun, right? Like fun job to market a successful team. Right. Yeah. Especially during, um, like football, men's basketball have been a lot of fun, uh, recently working with them. Um, they're all open to any idea to get fans in the games and the fans are always wanting to come. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, our soccer and volleyball teams uh, have been incredible these past couple of years uh, cross country. Um, we only have one home meet, so it's a little bit tougher to get fans of that. Um, and then baseball, softball in the spring is trying to find some more fun promotions for those ones, um, especially with the weather and everything like that. That's always a tricky situation. So you mentioned um, your previous university was a D1 school. Um, is you and I a D1 school or are they D2? Uh, yes, they are. They're the same kind of as Lehigh. Okay. So what's what's the difference coming from a D1 school to a D2 school? Because, I mean, I'm sure it's a lot different for the athletes, but as, as someone who works there, is, is the job different? Is it really the same sort of thing? Uh, the job's pretty much the same. From my end, um, just the staffing is the biggest change. Obviously, we know that in every department here, mm-hmm. uh, staffing is always an issue. Um, so like when I was at Northern Iowa, there was um, an assistant athletic director for marketing. And then there was like an assistant director of marketing. And then there was me as like the GA. Mm-hmm. And then we had like eight or nine interns. Um, same with Lehigh, very similar situation. Um, there was like the assistant AD, me full time. And then we had two GAs. Um, so staffing is definitely a big thing when I came here. Um, it's basically just me. And then I can find interns through the sports management program or any other kids that are really just interested in working in sports or just want to have some fun and do like social media and stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to ask what kind of opportunities are there, I mean, for students on campus or around here who are interested in what you do? Yeah, absolutely. We have plenty of opportunity. We're always looking for uh, students to help work game days. Um, That's our biggest thing. Um, So like our, uh, for my internship, um, we do a lot of the graphic design. So I have like all the templates made. Uh, we work on like cutouts, making a graphic from scratch, um, coming in, rolling t-shirts uh, to for our cheerleaders to throw out. Um, I don't think of what else they do. Um, they work on like photo shoots. Um, they help me with those. Um, our sports information director, Colin, he has a program of student workers. They do like the stats during the game. They run the cameras, uh, helping with Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, Kirsten also has a group of student workers, too, that help like scan tickets, do concession stands, um, scoreboard, stuff like that. So there's a lot of opportunities that we have available for students. Um, and it's a lot of fun. You get to watch sports. <laughs> what are I things mean, you look for in students? Like if they would apply for an internship or they they really want to do it, what are what are some of the things that someone who hires those interns, what are, what are you looking for? Biggest thing is dependability because um, we always rely, we really rely on our student workers to help because um, we're just a staff of six of us uh, full time uh, mm-hmm. admin members. Um, so we really look on dependability. So we want kids that are willing and able to work um, and have a good work ethic, like they're hardworking, dedicated. Um, they're not going to text us an hour before a game and be like, hey, I can't make it now. And I kind of just leave us hanging, scrambling. Um, and then kind of creativity, especially for me, I'm um, just coming up with fun promotions that they think that students will love as well as some of the older fans. What's one of your favorite promotions that you've done anywhere, not necessarily here, but anywhere? The most fun one is probably a chicken toss. It's basically, we just have these rubber chickens and you just have like a slingshot type thing. Um, and they have one person who's like pulling back on the chickens and then another person has like a helmet on their head with a little basket in it. And you just have like three chickens, you try to launch them and they try to catch them. It's kind of very entertaining. Uh, We started doing it at the MIAA basketball tournament in Kansas City. Uh, It's a lot of fun. (laughs) Maybe we should do that for career day. (laughs) I mean, you know, I'm always looking for ideas. (laughs) You can try it. I got the chickens and everything you need. (laughs) So um, Northwest Athletics have been very successful, but if somebody doesn't know, what are, you know, what are some of the things since you've been here that you've been able to, to kind of see with Northwest or help promote as we've gone through some of the successes we've had over there? Yeah. So I've had the great opportunity to travel with a lot of our teams. Um, So I usually try to travel to all uh, football and basketball road games um, as long as we don't have anything else going on at home. Um, So I get to see a lot of those games up close and personal. So I'm taking pictures during those games. Um, I've seen two men's basketball national championships. So it's been fun to kind of see the behind the scenes of that um, on the court when the confetti is going down and handing in a trophy, stuff like that. Um, this past fall, I was out in Seattle with cross country um, at their national championship meet. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And that was a different sport to experience that one. Um, 
I've traveled with tennis to their NCAA tournament in Arizona or Phoenix. That was fun. Uh, I'm to think. Just recently, I got back from Hawaii <laughs> with soccer for their spring break trip. So that was fun. I was doing a lot of like video, um, trying to document that as much as we could. Um, Cause that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity for those kids. And they raised, I think it was like 50 grand in a month and a half to go on that trip, um, which was incredible for coach Gordon and those girls to get to experience that. Yeah. That's a pretty easy work trip. I think like, <laughs> Oh, sorry. I, got, I can't like, I can go to that meeting. I got to be in Hawaii with the soccer team. Darn it. I was, so, I was fine with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Any words of wisdom? I mean, we always trying to think of listeners maybe um, who, are maybe frustrated or, or need some help, like looking for their next opportunity in their career. Like any words of wisdom for the person who's looking to transition into a new opportunity? I think just don't be afraid to reach out to somebody. I think that's the biggest thing. I think a lot of students are always like scared to reach out to like a full-time employee because they just don't know how it's going to come across. Um, but just don't hesitate to reach out and always be willing to like try new things. Um, I have one intern who's always willing just to do the most random things as long as it gets the job done and he gets to put it on his resume. I'm like, sure, let's do it. Whatever you want. Well, I would think in, in the job where you're in, like crazy ideas are sometimes the best ones like that chicken toss. Like that's a pretty outside the box idea. So, you know, whoever came up with that was, was doing some creative thinking and that worked out great. So yeah, that's a really valuable skill to have in that position, I would think. So. Oh, absolutely. What are, I'm, I'm surprised. Um, we've had like Todd Weddle, the university photographer and Mark Hornicle. So people that work upstairs in the admin building mm -hmm. kind of in marketing and communication. And I think sometimes people don't realize like athletics is a whole, like your guys is, but you're a whole separate kind of branch of marketing. So you don't necessarily go through the other one. So what are so, so you mentioned doing some graphic design. Do you do photography and videography and all that sort of stuff for the athletic side as well? Or do you have interns or other people that do that? Yeah. So when I first got here, I think we were going through university marketing um, because the person in the previous position didn't have like experience with that. Um, so we're going through university marketing for like all the photo shoots, video shoots, graphic design, stuff like that. Um, and then I got here, kind of started working with them a little bit. And I kind of tell that they're a little overwhelmed with a lot of stuff they got going on over there. Uh, and I already had experience in graphic design. So I was like, okay, we can take this over, kind of take it off their um, plate. And then I started, I picked up a camera one day. I was like, yeah, let's see how this goes started taking some pictures and I was like, okay, we could do this in house too. Um, so we got like a whole photo studio um, over here that we can set up, take down, um, working on finding a permanent spot. So it's a little bit easier, kind of like what Todd has up uh, at an admin building and then started taking pictures at all of our games. Um, and then we have some, we have a group of students usually too. We have two or three students that take pictures on game day. Um, and then like football and men's basketball, they hire their own student videographer. Um, so there's always an opportunity I think our uh, football one, Parker, he's graduating this next year. Um, and then same with Caleb from men's basketball. And then I know women's basketball, volleyball, they're always looking for a student to help shoot any games that they're available to do. Um, so that's a really good opportunity. I haven't touched video yet. I'm too scared, uh, scared to do that one. I'll do a couple mic'd up. That's easier. Just focusing on one person, but trying to get highlights of people. I'm going to stay away from that one. <laughs> yeah. Sports videography is a whole, that's, I, I was a broadcasting kid more on the radio side and it's like, I was fine with simple video stuff, but sports <laughs> video, it's like, no, 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 that's very hard. So. And yeah. it's incredible what uh, our students are able to come Absolutely. up with. Like, just, it just amazes me what they're able to do. And what a portfolio piece to say, yeah. you know, I shot video at the NCAA division two men's national championship yeah. game. Like, wow, exactly. that's awesome. So I know we have a former, former student. I think he's at K-State now as their videographer. And then Andrew Sherry, um, he was a student photographer, videographer here too. Um, now he's doing stuff for like the PGA tour. He kind of has his own freelance uh, business. So he's flying all over the place. So there's plenty of success stories um, from our student workers at the big time now. Yeah. If you like sports and you like creative work, I mean, it seems like a perfect match right there. Absolutely. Well, I would think at a school the size of Northwest too, there's, there are people that do that, but there's not a huge number of people that do that. So if you've got the talent, you reach out and you show what you got, you got a pretty good shot of getting through for an internship or getting hired for those positions too. So anybody student wise listening out there, don't be afraid to reach out. If you've got the chops, like you have a chance to get the job and do really cool stuff. So and we're always looking for the next, a random kid that can just pick up a camera and make something cool. 
Yeah, the next, uh, I'm trying to think who I was listening to. It was M. Night Shyamalan who was talking <laughs> about doing like Super 8 movies in his backyard when he was like eight years old. They're like, the next one. I'm, mm-hmm. They're probably here at Northwest right now. So anything else, Travis? No, I mean, I think um, that's all really good advice. Your story is awesome. And definitely, how can people get a hold of you? If somebody would like to reach out for an internship or to talk about opportunities, what's the best way they can get a hold of you over there? Uh, yeah, they can shoot me an email. Uh, my email is on bearcatsports.com. If you just go to the Inside Athletics staff directory, um, shoot me an email. Uh, I stop by my office. I'm on the top floor in Lambkin. Um, stop up to my office. I'm usually around um, every day. So it's pretty easy to find me um, or just find me on Twitter. You can DM me. Uh, that's easy too. Okay, excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that will do it for another episode of Behind the Bearcat. And we'll talk to you next time. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up below. That helps out. Also, if you've not done so yet, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Also, we'd love to connect with you on social media. You can find Behind the Bearcat on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Plus, the audio podcast comes out on Fridays on all the major podcast platforms. Thanks again for watching Behind the Bearcat. And as always, we'll talk to you next time.